You know, flying into big airports is convenient for location, but when you're in a little airplane, a little slow airplane like this, it makes it a challenge in sequencing. Number 901, Roger, we're contact about three miles north of the Van Nuys Airport. The Burbank altimeter is 3022, and he said 8,500. 3022, 8,500 would be great. We are in some downdrafts here. We've lost about 10 knots of true airspeed in order to maintain altitude. That means the atmosphere, the air is pushing us down. The air is sinking. Man, I was bold. I did not think about what am I going to do if the engine quits right now. Seriously, engine quits, you are going to put it down on the ground. Where are you going to put it? I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor with a passion for the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I've made it my mission to showcase safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to climb into the cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. Addison Ground, clear to Hotel Yankee India Airport. Via on departure, fly runway heading, expect radar vector. Show four nine departure. We're at the famously busy Van Nuys Airport in Southern California. Chelsea and I are on our way to the Central Coast to finish up the restoration on her Cessna 150 and do some California flying before we head back east to start the next set of adventures. In the previous episode, we waited out some weather in Chandler, Arizona, discussed the formation and negative effects of frost on your aircraft, and we flew through some eye-opening mountain wave that absolutely robbed us of every bit of performance we had left. We aimed for the updrafts and flew the Banning Pass into the LA Basin where we landed here, Van Nuys, California. In this episode, I've just dropped Chelsea off to pick up my SUV, which we left here when we airlined home for Christmas a few weeks ago, and she's making the three-hour drive up the 101 to Santa Maria while I head back to the Van Nuys Airport to pre-flight the Skyhawk and make the one-hour trip up and over the mountain. Beacon is on, and clear prop! Pressure's up and amps are charging. We're good, they're falling. That means we do not have a stuck starter. Avionics on. Van Nuys Airport, a piss information, Victor. 2151 Zulu. Wind 330 at 12. Visibility 10. Sky clear below 12,000. System test, okay. Temperature 15. Dew point minus 10. Altimeter 3020. Visual approach in use. Landing and departing runway 34 left and right. Low level wind shear advisories in effect. Notice to air missions runway 34 right visual approach slope indicator out of service. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Victor. Van Nuys clearance delivery Skyhawk November 8099 or 1. Cessna 80991 Van Nuys clearance, stay request. And we're heading to the northwest up to Santa Maria, just VFR at 8.5. And just a uh, Cessna 172, right, uh, 991? Yes, sir, Cessna 172, 809 or 9 or 1. November 80991, fly straight out. You said you go, uh, you're going out to the northwest, so fly straight out. Don't turn until the Sammy 118 freeway. So Cal's on 120.4 and squat 4656. 80991, depart straight out, no turns until the 118 freeway. SoCal is 120.4, squawk 4656. And uh, November 991, readback is correct, and let me know when you're ready for taxi. All right, we'll let you know when we're ready, 80991. November 7. Now is when I take my time to get all of my pre-taxi checklist items done and all of the avionics set how I want them before I call ready for taxi. What I just got from air traffic control is a VFR clearance. No turns until the 118 freeway, a departure frequency, and a squat code. Now at this point, it can be tempting to rush to start moving when the radio sounds fast and busy and there's a line guy out there waiting to marshal you out, but take your time and don't call for a taxi clearance until you are 100% briefed and ready to roll. Until you're established in the cruise phase of the flight, this is the least busy you're going to be. And now is the safest time to write everything down, go through your checklists, program your avionics, and get ready. Be courteous and make sure you're not in the way of another aircraft trying to enter or exit the ramp. But beyond that, don't let external pressures tempt you into rushing through your checklist or skipping steps. 
And CFIs, go easy on the students and pilots you're flying with when they're taking their time to understand it and do it right. In the airlines, they do not move on to the next phase until all checklists have been completed. Based on their safety record, we in general aviation should be more like them. Take your time and do it right. Efficiency will come with proficiency. Super nice guy. That's a line guy who used to work in Hollywood. He was a stunt double and now he's getting into aviation. He wants to eventually start flying corporate jets and he's gonna learn how to fly here in Van Nuys. The readback is correct, thank you for your patience and uh, let me know when you're ready for taxi. All right, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and contact ground, tell him I'm at Jet Aviation with information whiskey. I'll just uh, obey whatever instructions that he wants to tell me. I'm not gonna tell him that I want a taxi to a certain runway. That's up to the controller. So I'm just gonna say ready to taxi VFR. Van Nuys Ground, Skyhawk, November 809901, information whiskey, ready to taxi at Jet Aviation. And I'm sorry about that, calling at uh, Jet Aviation, who's that? This is Skyhawk, November 809901. Ah, November 809901, Van Nuys Ground, let's see, nothing there, perfect for me, runway 34 left at hotel, taxi via Alpha. Alright, 34 left at hotel, taxi via Alpha, 809901. What ATIS do you have? ATIS Whiskey. Perfect, thanks. Taxi to 34 left, intersection hotel, via taxiway alpha. Simple enough. Before I started taxiing, I did verify on the chart how much runway I had remaining from taxiway hotel. 3,600 feet from hotel to the end of the displaced threshold. It's a really bad habit to leave usable runway behind you on takeoff. It just whittles away options to land if your engine fails. But especially with our light weight on this flight, I'm good with an intersection departure if that makes it easier on the controllers. If you're ever given an intersection departure though, and you would like full length of the runway instead, you can always tell the controller you need full length. You might just have to wait a few more minutes for sequencing. I completed my run-up and pre-takeoff checklists tucked out of the way by Taxiway Hotel. And these skilled controllers had to work a gap in the private jets long enough to let all of us little airplanes depart. After 27 minutes of idling at the runway, it was finally my turn. System 9901, fly straight out. Wind 330 three, four left at hotel, clear for takeoff. Straight out departure 34 left at hotel, clear for takeoff 809901. All right, windows mixture lights. Checklists are done. Cherokee 61 Fox, off a sequence, turn left 10 degrees, fly towards the number. All right, we're gonna let our left turning tendencies sort of carry us over here. And 50 knots. Traffic. Cherokee 61 Fox, turn left 10 degrees, fly towards the number over. We're airborne at about 500 feet. Left 10 degrees, 61 Fox, right. We're gonna fly straight out. Malibu, two Bravo Golf, top departing Cessna, straight out, top departing to Prowler Runway, Cherokee in the east pattern, wind 330, one four and three four left, full length, clear for takeoff. Three four left, full length, clear for takeoff, ready to four two Bravo Golf. Engine looks and feels great. Cessna 991, connect circuit out the pod shell, one two zero point four, safe flood. One two zero point four, thanks for the service, 991. See you. SoCal departure, Skyhawk 80991, just off Van Nuys, 2500 climbing. Number 80991, so Colorado, drop your ring off number 3022. 3022, 9991. 991, go ahead and ident to your destination. Here's the ident, we're going to Santa Maria, Sierra Mike X ray. Number 991, Roger, radar contact about three miles north of the Van Nuys Airport, the ring off number 3022, and he said 8,500. 3022, 8,500 would be great. 991, Roger, here's my navigation and uh, V4 climb group. All right, on navigation, we're going to proceed on course and climb up to 85. That's another one, thanks. Approach, good afternoon, citation 35. That was a mouthful. I did not need to reply with that much. I could have just said, Roger. Kill approach, deliver ring altimeter 302 T. Make straight in the runway 15 and maneuver is necessary to get something. We are right over the 118 freeway. There's the San Fernando Reservoir that we were told to stay straight until we got to. Van Nuys, it's a busy, busy airport. Number 9901, connect to Cal Approach 134.2. 134.2, 809901, get 8. SoCal Skyhawk 809901, 3900 climbing on course. Skyhawk 809901, SoCal Departure, ident altimeter 3023. 3023, ident 9901. Our instruments calibrated and cross checked, everything looks good, bugs are accounted. 909901, radar contact 5 miles northwest to the Van Nuys Airport, VFR climb approved. 9901, thanks. Yeah. Flight plan open. Climb checklist complete. Have a good day. SoCal has such a vibe to it. Even from up here, you can feel it. 
It's one town after another connected by a complex vascular system of eight-lane arteries, with millions of individual lives, each one of them, living at the center of their own universe. And to them, I am nothing more than a distant and faint hum of complete insignificance. It's humbling and healthy to change the way you see things every now and then. And flying above the earth continues to show me this beautiful world from a different perspective. Descent maintains 7,000. Descent maintains 7,000. Gas 3334. Southwest 1557, maintain flight level 230, and contact Central Center 12518. 25-8, and we're uh, climbing up to 230 on 1557. Approach Skywest 3401, 11.5, climbing 130, heading 320. So I'm constantly thinking about my outs. If the engine, if something were to happen to the engine right now, where would I be going? Off to the right out there is Santa Clarita. You know, I really like flying with the sectional. On most electronic flight bags, and of course like the base map on these avionics and stuff, you have a really nice base map. And I do think that it's nice to fly with this sometimes, but when I am flying purely by visual references, especially around terrain, I'm looking at towns and all that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't know, I just learned with sectionals and the sectional, I can just, I can glance at the sectional and get such a good mental picture and good situational well, awareness about what's around me and what yeah, the terrain we'll should look like yeah. and everything. So really, that's why I just like to fly with the sectional. Also, at first glance, you can zoom into an airport and you have this data block that shows you everything you need to know about the airport. Airport elevation, longest runway length. Is it lit and when? What's the CTAF? What's the tower frequency? What's the ATIS? What are the non-standard traffic patterns, if any? All those little symbols, they're all in the legend and you just learn them over time. That is just why I personally like flying with the sectional. The autopilot just leveled us off at 8,500 feet. So I'm rolling the power back. These mountains coming up here are at 4,800 feet, and then just beyond that, they're at 6,700 feet. And then beyond that, they're at 7,500 feet. So we're gonna be 1,000 feet above the highest terrain here, and we can actually pull up the profile view. Boom, right there, 8,500. Traffic at sight, 8091. Above one zero two, traffic at two miles westbound, eight thousand five hundred. Sirius XM is indicating at Santa Maria, wind three zero zero at eleven knots, visibility ten, sky clear. We are in some downdrafts here. We've lost about 10 knots of true airspeed in order to maintain altitude. That means the atmosphere, the air is pushing us down. The air is sinking. So we have to, the airplane basically has to swim up in order to maintain altitude. Uh, LA Dynasty 005, heavy passing 6300, level 230. We got 58 minutes until sunset. And 50 minutes until we get to Santa Maria. So we're going to be landing right before sunset. Pretty good timing. I like to, especially flying over stuff like this, single engine at night, you're asking for trouble. Even right now, if my engine were to quit, I have relatively few options. I'm going to the left if the engine were to fail right now. But that's also where the engine monitor does make me feel a little bit more comfortable because I'm able to, to monitor EGTs and CHTs and I can see if any one cylinder is starting to do anything weird or if an ignition system is starting to do anything weird. All right, right now, if I had an engine issue, I would be making a beeline for the coast. Delta 311, clear direct Denti, climb This is relatively Delta unforgiving terrain up here. Direct Denti up to 230, Delta 311. You gotta think about what would happen if the engine failed. You know, early on in my flying days, I did not think about what am I gonna do if the engine quits right now, seriously. Think about it. Engine quits, you are going to put it down on the ground. Where are you going to put it? All of this is super rugged out here. So I think it's healthy to, to think about that. You know, carry as much altitude as you possibly can. And just be constantly thinking about, okay, if the engine were to quit or start giving me issues, what's my next move? What am I going to do? I'd make an immediate left turn and, and glide toward 
the coast, which is where the terrain descends toward. Niner, Niner, one, contact OA Center, one, one, Niner, point, zero, five. One, one, Niner, point, zero, five, eight, zero, Niner, Niner, one, good eight. Eight. LA Center, Skyhawk, eight, zero, Niner, Niner, one, eight thousand, seven hundred, VFR. November, eight, zero, Niner, Niner, one, LA Center, the Santa Maria Altimeter, three, zero, two, Niner. Three, zero, two, Niner, 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 one. This mentality has unequivocally changed the way I fly. I don't nonchalantly pop a line from one airport to another and hope for the best anymore. That's not airmanship. What's going to happen if the unexpected happens? The one and only engine we have up front fails, even partially, or the weather turns to crap and we have to turn around or divert. Do we have the fuel to do that? What are my options? In the middle of this leg, I silently reflected on the fact that I've flown myself into one of these situations where my options are not really there. An engine failure does not cause you to fall out of the sky, but it does force you to start your descent. What's within your glide range? Is it a straight highway with few cars, or maybe some flat farmland? Right now, my only option is the Pacific Ocean. If the engine quit, I'd hit the Garmin Smart Glide button, roll the heading bug to the beach, and reach under the seat to put my life vest on. I've driven the 101, there's not much of a beach down there, and the highway is narrow and curvy, so my safest option would be to ditch in the surf, and my glide would barely get me there if I do it all correctly. I've flown myself into a bit of a corner here, and here's my debrief of what I could have done to make this situation safer. One, I should have adjusted my route to stay more along the coast so that I could have had more terrain clearance underneath me with more time to make a decision on where to make a forced landing. And two, despite the hellacious headwind up high, I should have climbed. I had enough fuel to compensate for the added flight time, but having even 2,000 feet more of altitude would have greatly grown my glide range, thus growing the time and amount of options in case of an emergency. The only things that would make me feel better about flying over no option territory like this is either having a powerful twin that can safely support itself on one engine, or a single engine airplane with an airframe parachute that, in the event of an engine failure over rugged terrain, can let you and your passengers down safely so that you can come home to your family. Never stop calculating your options up there. It's all fun and games until it's not. Expect the unexpected and don't fly yourself into a corner. Approach Skyhawk 80991, starting the VFR descent Santa Maria. Skyhawk 9901, right here. I bet Chelsea is down on the highway, off to my left somewhere. I wonder which one of those glistening cars is her. Contact Santa Maria Tower, 118.3, good night. Switch to the tower, good night, 80991. Good evening, Santa Maria Tower, Skyhawk November 80 at 9901, approaching from the southeast with information golf, full stop. So 80901, uh, correction, 9901, Santa Maria Tower, make straight in, runway 30, report 3 mile final. Report 3 miles straight in, runway 30, 80991. Watching us get closer to the airport in this big valley is like watching paint dry. Latest wind update from Sirius XM is 290 at 10. We are, it is chilly outside and we are coming down into a higher humidity environment. We'll go ahead and pull the car beat out. Free landing checklist, seatbelts, shoulder harnesses are fastened, brakes, pedal tests, lights are on. Barrel minimum set and verified, we don't need them. Autopilot is indeed off, mixture set best power. We're going to go full rich, it's cold and we're coming down to sea level. Car beat's already on, fuel selector is on both. Flaps waiting on the wide arc, we will use flaps on this landing, it's not gusty and View ref, 60 knots, over the fence. Pre-landing checklist complete. Santa Maria Tower, Skyhawk 80991, a three mile final, runway 30. 9991, Jeff Caravan taking the run for departure, runway 30, clear to land. 30, clear to land, 80991. All right, I'm gonna start easing the power back and I'm gonna pull the nose up. That's gonna translate to us being pretty high on final, but that's okay. I'm gonna start adding some flaps, slowly coming down. Returning back to base. There's 85 knots in the water, 1,000, 2,1,000, Flaps set 10 degrees. This is KG before we switch to traffic, two miles northwest of the airport, southeast bound of VFR target, 3,500, not talking to anybody, and you can contact uh, Santa Barbara, have a good flight. 500 AGL. Keep an eye out and contact departure, Pike Valley, 7682, 75 knots, 1,1,000, 2,1,000, 3,000, flaps set 20. Carpeet's coming in, ready for a go-around. 
Power is to idle. Coming down through 70 knots. 65. Into the round out and into the flare. Little balloon. Hold it off. Hold it off. Hold it off. That's about the smoothest landing of my life. Tower 9901, you want me off at Alpha 6? 9901, where you parking? Going to the self serve pump. 9901, Alpha 6, Romeo, monitor ground, point nine. Alpha 6, Romeo, monitor ground, 9901. Right as I finish topping off the airplane, I see Chelsea roll through the gate to meet me on the ramp. The timing couldn't have been more perfect. We're temporarily staying near Santa Maria while she finishes the restoration of her Cessna 150, and we took advantage of our time here to explore the breathtaking views of the central coast of California. I have a lot of amazing content to edit from this trip, including a day trip to Catalina Island, a landing at a private winery runway, and just a lot of little adventures in between wrenching on her plane as it gets finished up. The footage we take of our travels is the greatest souvenir I could ask for, and I'm grateful to be able to relive all of it through editing and share it with all of you right here on Aviation 101. Until next time, you know the drill. I want you to stay happy, healthy, current, but most importantly, stay proficient. Sharpen your airmanship with conservative judgment and always keep safety at the center of your flying. We'll see you in the next video right here in Santa Maria for a sunrise departure to Catalina Island. Fly safe.